The idea of depleted uranium is one of the best kept secrets of mass death and genocide of our age, of our times, maybe of all times. We literally covered Iraq with it, if Afghanistan, Libya was pounded with DU. The Israelis, of course, continue to douse um, the West Bank and Gaza with it. People die. But the, the amusing part of that is a lot of it blows right back into Israel. I mean, the, yeah. these people are <laughs> they are getting what they deserve, unfortunately for the innocent folks who are going to suffer and die from it. But, you know, it's, a, it's an equal opportunity killer, depleted uranium. Yeah, and the people that use it, for some reason, don't seem to mind that which is the mind boggling. Yeah, it, it certainly is. All right, yeah. the, the idea of testing and trying to evaluate the damage to the human body sustained by radiation exposure, uh, it, it's basically a joke, a deadly, lousy, rotten joke now, because the criteria used are, are decades and decades old and were done before our understanding and ability to test for, for DNA damage, for example. Isn't this true? This is correct. The, the, the modern theory of radiation effect and um, the, an understanding of the first estimates of what constituted a safe exposure to radiation, this was all done before DNA was discovered. And after that, since the early 1950s until today, there's been a revolution in biology and all of the molecular biology that has uh, uh, contributed to an understanding of radiation effects on the cellular level are ignored when evaluating hazards to populations that are exposed to uh, released radiation. So it's mind-boggling. Once again, they're using an antiquated system of radiation effects, which denies a half century of research in order to justify the conclusions that only a few people or no people are going to be injured from uh, uh, Fukushima. It's uh, a dastardly. I, I would uh, say that you're, you're being right on the money here with this, and I, I dastardly, I, 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 I run out of words, Paul, anymore to describe what's going on on this planet. I really do. We've used words now so often to describe horrifying situations that the words now are beginning to lose their punch with people. They hear them all the time, and that's unfortunate, but it's what we're stuck with. All right, let's, let's go ahead. How, how, do, how do we as average citizens begin to approach a subject like this, which is not only screened from us, but is obfuscated with lies and perversions when it is discussed. Take de depleted uranium, for example. We can do that. Uh, but beyond that, we have the idea of radioactivity being continually and constantly bled into the Pacific Ocean in enormous amounts every day and into the atmosphere around the clock. Now, that doesn't count the nuclear power plants, 104 reactors in this country, which also yield a deadly release every day of radiation. Just tell us more about this whole issue. Um, the approach that I've taken it was uh, to, uh, well, first of all, uh, you have posted on your website uh, a central chapter of my book entitled The Most Heinous Crime in History, The Betrayal of Mankind by the Radiation Protection Agency. Uh -huh. In that, I uh, attempted to show as many scams as possible that are used and that an astute reader uh, incorporating and understanding those can then go to the newspapers and read the articles about how uh, radiation is safe, that it's no different than uh, an x-ray or no different than living. Boy, am I tired day. of hearing that. Take a plane flight, get an x-ray, it's yeah. the same thing. Gee. Yeah, live in Denver because of the uh, radon uh, escape from uh, the granite and the rock. Exactly. It, yeah. It's, uh, there's so many tricks that are used that sound very convincing until you understand the underlying logic. In terms of the... Um, we, we are handicapped. The average human being is handicapped because this is a very sophisticated subject and only people with some background in the sciences can begin to understand it. 
but something like Fukushima, where you have so much radiation pouring into the Pacific, obviously a, a, a safe approach is not to eat fish out of the Pacific anymore. Eat because nothing out of the Pacific anymore. No, no, the, the seaweed, uh, everything. Because there isn't sufficient testing, nobody knows. So you can only err on the side, on the side of extreme caution by trying to limit your intake of where you might find radiation. But as you've described, it's coming down in the rain in hot spots all over our country, and people don't know what uh, they're being exposed to. Uh, those studies that were done with uh, um, hot particles showing up in the air filters of cars, Yes. This is an anal analogous to what people are breathing in and out all the time. Exactly. But it's also showing up in the air filters of home uh, HVA systems. If you can send, there's a company actually doing free testing. If you send your, your internal home air filter to them, they'll tell you how much uh, radiation is in your house. <laughs> but once again, the average person has no way of evaluating what's hazardous and what's not hazardous. Uh, how much radiation they're getting or how much radiation is going to uh, eventually be uh, eroding their health. How, how many, <laughs> Paul, Paul, excuse me, but how many reports have you seen from the federal government, the EPA most specifically, about radiation dangers and levels and exposure since Fukushima in this country? I've seen none. None, no. Of all the scams that I've examined about how... Uh, the Radiation Protection Agency cover up environmental releases. I have to admit that what's going on from Fukushima is most artful. It's, it's admirable in its uh, deceit. But basically, nobody in the mainstream is talking about it. And the average person is going to say to themselves, well, if it was a big deal, they'd be talking about it. Since I don't hear anything, it must be okay. It's the deafening silence that is succeeding in covering up Fukushima more than anything else. Absolutely. The government's not taking, yeah. Yeah, the government's not taking an active role. There's no uh, monitoring of the food supply. Uh, it's just silent. We, we know for a fact that uh, Fukushima radiation has uh, impregnated the soil over much of the West Coast and other areas of the country. We knew within weeks of Fukushima that Vermont dairy cat Vermont folks, dairy cattle, were showing radioactive cesium from Fukushima in their milk, meaning it came down in the rain, on the grass, they ate the grass, came out in the milk. We know in California, I've seen reports and posted them, that some pine needle samples in pine trees over a vast area of the Pacific coast show radioactive cesium already, having been uptaken by the tree or directly left on the pine needles by rain. We do know that dairy has uh, shown an increase. We do know that pistachio nuts, for example, also. Um, navel oranges grown in California, actually exported to Japan, were found to have uh, high levels of, of radioactivity in them that shouldn't be there. So it's, it is, it's a very ugly situation. And they're talking now, within three to five years, of having a up to 4% level of cesium in the Pacific Ocean along the West Coast. Now, I'm not yeah, sure what what the four percent means exactly, but it's four percent too much, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, there's also the issue of the mutation, the mutation of the butterflies, the mutation of the insects, uh, the disappearance of uh, songbirds in the immediate surroundings of Fukushima. The, nature is screaming that there's. Uh, 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 mutagenic forces that have been released and species are being altered. The radiation protection community says, well, you know, okay, uh, different species have different uh, uh, types of uh, uh, different levels of radio sensitivity. And just because we're seeing uh, deformed butterflies, that doesn't mean that this is going to create deformed humans. But what's happening is on a cellular level of human beings, the same forces that are causing mutations in, in insects are causing um, uh, genetic damage on the cellular level. And this is contributing to gene expression and altered function of cells. And if it doesn't produce a cancer, it can very uh, easily um, create um, a, a sense of uh, dis-ease, 
of not feeling yourself, of the body uh, dysfunctioning. Uh -huh. And this is one of the things that the radiation protection agencies don't even acknowledge as a result of radiation. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. Paul, in just a couple of minutes, we have to take a short break here. We'll come right back with Mr. Paul Zimmerman, uh, one of the world's foremost authorities on radiation exposure, and we need to have this knowledge, and he's giving it to us tonight. His book is also available and loaded with it.